Hey everyone, welcome to Inside ASU Football. Joe Paquino alongside ArizonaSports.com's Vince Morata. Vince, so far leading up to this season, there was so much hype about the Todd Graham era. And for that first game report card, the Devils and Graham get A's across the board. Yeah, I think that's the only way really you can uh, you describe it is A's all the way across the board. Uh, you know, Todd Graham said a lot of great things. He did a lot of good things, revisiting the past, uh, reestablishing that uh, tradition of ASU football. And that first game against NAU, yeah, it was NAU. They're expected to beat them handily. But we've seen ASU teams struggle with NAU in the past. There was a game not too long ago. They were tied 14-all going into the fourth quarter. This team took care of business from the opening uh, whistle to the final gun. They really, really impressed me. Yeah, a dominating performance all the way around. It's almost fitting that it's an election year because ever since he stepped off the plane from Pittsburgh, new ASU coach Todd Graham has been like a politician selling everyone on ASU football. He said and done all the right things. Now he has to start backing them up. Graham leading the team out of the tunnel to face NAU. Devils look good from the very start. Opening drive, Cameron Marshall. So good to see him back from a knee injury, Vince, and he ran well tonight. He did. He, uh, you know, only a handful of carries, but that's all they needed him for. Uh, he'd been uh, held back a lot during camp, especially up at Camp Tonazona, where he was just wearing the uniform, wasn't doing much other than Muscle Beach, but he really <laughs> uh, did perform well. Two touchdowns on those handful of carries. Taylor Kelly with a good opening debut at quarterback. Marshall for another touchdown. So just like that, it's 14-0 after one. Yeah, the Devils, like I said, came out right when the uh, game started. And they established themselves as the superior team, and they kind of stole the will of NAU right from the get-go. Second quarter, DJ Foster, a true freshman, doing some good things for ASU, getting into the end zone. And how about Brandon McGee coming back from a knee injury with this interception return for a touchdown? Love this kid. He's one of the most gregarious athletes in ASU history. I think he should have his own talk show. Uh, and to see him come back from such a devastating injury that took away a, a full year from him to contribute like he did was a great thing to see. Marion Grice with a strong debut for the Devils at running back with three touchdowns. And how about another interception, this one by Alden Darby for 50 yards. He's become one of the team leaders on defense, uh, not only with his actions and his words, but you see with his play as well, making a big defensive stop. That right there caps off a Michael Eubank touchdown. So. 42 first half points by the Devils as they win big in Graham's debut, 63 to six the final. Before out there, I was I was I was nervous, and uh, you know once that first snap hit, it's just you know just another game of, of football. You know we we got the victory tonight, and uh, tonight uh, we took care of the football, and uh, we we got came out with the W. Yeah, it was exciting. Uh, the whole game was exciting. I, I was excited to be back out there with my teammates, and uh, as a defense, we did really good. I just I had to drop the number three, and I dropped the number three, just threw the ball, and I ran with it, and that's it. In the story. Proud a lot of young guys played tonight. I think we had five or six true freshmen play. Really proud of them. Um, and uh, 26, uh, uh, you know, newcomers, the first time to be in a college football game. So uh, um, obviously very, very proud of our football team. And uh, step one is accomplished. Uh, we got win number one, and we go to next week. Coach Graham with a lot to be proud of, and rightfully so. The offense sets the tone, led by new starting quarterback Taylor Kelly. I'll tell you what, there was so much made about him going into this game. A lot of people saying he was unflappable. We saw that on opening night. This kid is the real deal. Well, to elevate yourself from third on the depth chart entering fall camp, to win that starting job for game one is impressive in itself. And then to come out, he, he admitted that he had uh, butterflies coming out of the tunnel. But as soon as that first snap happened, Joe, he was uh, ready to go and did exactly what Todd Graham wanted him to do. Took care of the football, ran the football a little bit, completed 15 of 19 passes. He did everything that he was asked to do. 247 yards through the air for Kelly. And how about the ground game? They were spectacular. 305 yards. Marion Grice leads the way with 107 yards and three touchdowns. Well, that was the strength of this offense going into the season was the depth of the running back position. We haven't even seen them all yet. Uh, but Marion Grice in his first collegiate game, 107 yards, three scores, as you said, Joe. Uh, Cameron Marshall, DJ Foster, who looks so comfortable out there, does not look like a true freshman at all. Todd Graham has raved about him with good reason. He's just handled his business very professionally for a freshman. I mean, this time last year, he was on the campus of Saguaro High School in Scottsdale, and he's really, really acclimated himself well. And we didn't even see Jamal Miles or James Morrison, who were suspended for game one. On the other side of the ball, the defense was spectacular. They allowed only one first down in the first half with three interceptions. Well, that was the, the thing, too, is in, in blowout games like that, a 42 nothing game, uh, in the first half. It's very easy for a defense to lose their focus. This defense didn't lose their focus. There was a couple of slip-ups that Todd Graham alluded to about uh, you know, in the second half. 
uh, losses of focus and big plays here and there, and they did allow a touchdown. But for the most part, uh, for, for most of that 60 minutes, it was a dominating performance by the defense as you, well. Yeah, for sure. Look, for years, everyone wondered why the Devils couldn't play discipline. It comes down to coaching as Graham definitely has the ASU Sun Devils on the right path. You know, no one is happier to be on the field for the Sun Devils more than Brandon McGee. Coming back from a knee injury, the senior with an interception return in the Devils' blowout win. Getting ready to face Illinois, McGee squaring off with our Scott Smith. Thanks, Joe. Here with linebacker Brandon McGee coming off a 57 point win. I know this team had confidence going in, but when you reap the rewards like you did on Thursday night, does that validate all this hard work that Todd Graham has kind of pushed and pushed on this team? Oh, yeah. I mean, it means a lot to the team to come out and get their first victory under our belt, get us more comfortable, relax in the system. But this week, we, I mean, we got to practice like we never practiced before. We got a good opponent coming in here with Illinois, and we got to continue to grow as a team. Obviously, you led that defense. You guys did a spectacular job. But mm -hmm. in some ways, did you almost surpass your own expectation? My expectations were actually higher than what I did on the field. I, I set them way too high. But, but as a defense, I felt we did really good hustling to the ball. We made about five critical errors that can cost us in the, in the, with the plan against bigger opponents. But we had to continue to grow and get a bigger grasp on this uh, system, and we'll be fine. At six points on the board were credited directly to you. Take me through that pick six. It was a pick six. Uh, it was Trey formation. I got to carry. Number three down the field. We're sending our spur backer off the uh, off the edge. I dropped in the middle of the field. I saw the quarterback look at the receiver, broke on the pass, picked it off, almost dropped it. Honestly, I don't know how it looks so clean when I watch it on YouTube, but I almost dropped it. And then I was just like, man, I got to score. I got to score. No matter what, I had to score. And I got some big, uh, big time key blocks up there by my other defensive uh, players. And I scored, man. Now you came out in the offseason and joined us at CBS 5 mm -hmm. on set. And you said that a Bernie dance was coming. Mm -hmm. I understand that penalties will come <laughs> if you do it on the field. Can we see it now? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh. You know, hey, I would have did it in the game, yeah. but, you know, uh, that would have been my last time on the field. Can't get no flags like that, especially to me. It wouldn't look too good. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. The, the, the key to beating Illinois on Saturday at home. Discipline. That's the key. Everybody has to maintain it in their gaps as they have a, a running quarterback and they have great backs back there. And every, you have to be in your gap every play. If you give up big plays, then, I mean, that can hurt us. Brandon McGee, the 1-0 and Sun Devils looking to go 2-0 and this Saturday. Joe, back to you. All right, Scotty, thank you. This week, the Devils competition takes a big step up on Saturday as they host Illinois. The Fighting Illini opened the season beating Western Michigan at home 24-7. Athletic quarterback Nathan Schillhouse threw for 164 yards and a touchdown. Illinois with only 248 yards of offense. Their defense was spectacular, forcing a turnover and allowing only seven points. It's a great non-conference test for the Devils. Going into this game, obviously early in the season, not beat yourself. This is a huge game for us. A huge game for us. You know, we came out and we, we, we did really good in week one, uh, but we're going against a, a, a formidable opponent this week. We got to be good with our reads and get the ball out quick, and you know, our O line's got to come off the ball with the, the running game. Oh, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I saw it. Yeah, I, I watched it. I remember everything, and we got to come back and get the W at our home now. It's, it's our time. EJ just beat me one year, I'm going to forget about it. And I, was like, Ooh, I can't wait till they come in here. Quarterback, he can run. Who cares? I don't care. I don't care. If you run the ball, you're going to get hit. That's, I hope he keeps the ball. I, I'm, I'm a linebacker. I want to hit the quarterback. Keep the ball. <laughs> Brandon McGee, obviously very excited for this one because he remembers the game last year at Memorial Stadium because he couldn't play in that game because of the knee injury, a game in which ASU lost 17-14, a game they could have easily won. They blew a lot of red zone opportunities in that game. So, Vince, the rematch, second time around, what are the keys to victory for ASU? I think for one, it's a, a heavier dose of Cameron Marshall. We mentioned only six carries in that first game. Uh, against NAU. Cameron Marshall is kind of the battering ram for this ASU running game. I think he can soften up the middle of that Illinois defense and then create opportunities for the playmakers on the edge. So I really think uh, that that's a key. I think the, the Sun Devils have to avoid Jonathan Brown, the, the, the linebacker from Illinois. I still have nightmares <laughs> watching him dominate like he did a year ago in Champaign-Urbana. He had three and a half tackles for loss, created some turnovers. He also forced a fumble and recovered a fumble last week against Western Michigan. So look out for number 45. And the third key for me is the tempo. Todd Graham called ASU's offensive tempo excruciatingly slow after a game in which they scored 63 points and ran 71 offensive plays. They're going to make a concerted effort to ratchet up that tempo. They want to be around 80 to 85 plays. Illinois is not comfortable playing that tempo. Big 10 football, uh, you know, they were in the 60s uh, play-wise against Western Michigan last week. 
you got to factor in the heat when tempo is involved too. I don't think Illinois is going to be used to the heat, even though it's a night game. I think all of those things, uh, if the Sun Devils can capture those three things, they have a real good chance to win. And I actually like their chances to win this game. And I, I do too. So that being said, with all the factors you just mentioned, Vince, who do you like in this one and why? I, I like ASU for those very reasons. Uh, and I'll take ASU 28-24. Uh, I think it's a much higher level of competition than what ASU faced a week ago against NAU. I think revenge is on their minds, and I think uh, the discipline, we heard some of the players talk about it in, in the bites, uh, the discipline was a big factor against NAU. 30 yards in penalties. Uh, this is a different football team. 15 of those penalty yards came on a questionable offensive pass interference call. Zero yards uh, of penalties on defense. All of those things are factoring in. The buy-in has been tremendous. The, uh, Todd Graham talked about it this week, how quickly the player got in. He thought players would revert back to their old ways of 2011 last year under the Dennis Erickson uh, regime. It didn't happen. They're in. They're fully in, and I think we're going to see a, a good demonstration of that this week. I like ASU at home. I just think they're going to carry over all that momentum from the opening night. They're the more athletic team. They could have won that game last year. Like I said, I think the offense is a little more poised, a little more weaponry, especially in the backfield. Well, and you mentioned Jamal Miles coming back. Jamal Miles. Kyle Middlebrook's back from an injury as well. All good things for ASU. ASU 28-21 by my count. Kickoff is set for 7:30. The Devils are two and one lifetime against Illinois. This is only the second time the Fighting Illini have come to Sun Devil Stadium. Devils won the last matchup in Tempe 21 to 16 back in 1988 when Larry Marmy was the head coach. We're going way back there. <laughs> that will do it for us. He's Vince. I'm Joe. We'll see you in Cyber World next week.